Okay, I'm going to pull the meeting to order. If everybody could just stand and face the pledge. It's the flag and the pledge is over there. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I apologize for the uh, ramped quarters. Like I said, we are having our Maniscalco Award here tonight, so most of the building is being occupied by that. So um, if we can just move along. If uh, I can have a motion to accept last month's minutes, please. Thank you. CB3, CB1. OK, we do not have any correspondence. We are going to move along to our first presentation. We have Diana Layden, who is the New York City taxpayer advocate here, to give us a brief discussion on the services of their office. Welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Should I speak into the mic? Are you recording it? Yes, we do okay. have to record them. Um, so, well, uh, thank you again for having us. We are a brand new office. I know Councilman Mateo was at one of the hearings that I, I gave and listened to us. But it's great for us to tell you what we do, why we do it, how we do it, so that you can tell people in your districts you know, how they can reach out to us. So some of you may or may not know that Commissioner Jiha created this office so we can be truly independent, and, and we are. We're there when your clients get stuck, and we own the case until we finish it. And during that time, when we're doing what we call case advocacy, we start to find that there are systemic problems. Every large bureau of bureaucratic organization has systemic problems. Our function is to also not only identify them, but suggest changes. And so one of the things that your constituents can do is they can contact us by email, they can contact us through a telephone, they can contact us on the web. I have some forms and things that I can leave with you today. Um, my numbers are uh, on some magnets and stuff that we have. They can always call my office. We will talk with them on the phone. Sometimes we have just inquiries. How do I get this form? I don't understand why my bill says this. We will take that inquiry and we will find out who the right person at the Department of Finance is to speak. More often, somebody will come with truly a problem. And right now we have about, I think our numbers are about 78 cases that we've had so far. We average about 40 days to work a case. Some are more entrenched than others. Um, and we will be issuing a report sometime in the end of April, beginning of May, the 10 most serious problems that we feel the New York City taxpayers face with business taxes and with property taxes. We've collected some data that our office has had, and we think these are things that the department should uh, attend to. And I think Commissioner G. is very much in board in trying to change things. Um, how do we work the cases? So if someone calls, we have a person, our analyst, who will take an inquiry. And some inquiries come through 311. And it's interesting, we thought, initially when we had the office stand up, we thought well, a majority of them would come through 311. And that's really not the case. We get a lot of people who are very savvy and come on the web. We have walk-ins. People come into our office, which is at 253 Broadway, the sixth floor. We have inquiries from the council members and from community leaders who contact us. Um, and sometimes, even within the department, somebody who's working a case will realize they, they don't know what to do with the case, and they'll send it to us. Um, so we have also have under our auspices the Scree and Dree unit, which after the fiscal year 1617 will come into our office. So we have inquiries that are handled by someone who will actually make the contact with someone at the Department of Finance. Sometimes it's other agencies. We work closely with the Department of Buildings, DEP, and other ones. Um, sometimes it really needs a more in-depth inquiry and investigation. And we have what we call case advocates. So Robin Bermudez, some of you may know, she was with External Affairs. She's my case advocate for property. I have someone for collections. And I have an attorney advisor and a business person. Next year, the screen injury ombuds persons, which the council created, will actually come into my office and they'll be a case advocate. So the way we operate is if you have a constituent call us, we will contact them within five business days to tell them who is working on the case, a telephone number to contact them, an email, our hours of operation, and we will understand what the problem is. Then we have a check-in period. We always give them a first letter, giving that information again, and then we try to touch, to touch base with them at least every two weeks. Even if it gets stuck, we want them to know we're still working on the case and we're still trying to work on it. And then when it's resolved, we will send them a closing letter and we'll send them uh, a customer service satisfaction um, survey. In some cases, we can't help. We just really can't help us the way the law is. But in my report, those would be cases where we'll identify that we think they may need for some legislative changes. Any 
any questions? We haven't had too many from Staten Island yet. We most of the majority have been from Manhattan and from Brooklyn. Part of that is property driven with the amounts we have. We do go to the notices of property value uh, sessions and the lien sale sessions, and we've had uh, quite an uptick, and you probably will know in the sessions, and that's good. Thank you, we need to come in. One of the things that our, our office has worked on, and we can leave them here with you tonight, is something we call a property tax calculator for class one property owners. So I have, I kidded everyone, I said, I have two advanced degrees, and when I came in, I had to understand the property tax system in New York. I, it was a challenge for me. So one of the things that we did is we created this Excel spreadsheet, which we hope to put on the web next year. So someone can come in and say, I think you've got the market value wrong. And we'll show whether or not it changes their assessed value. Because you all know the caps sometimes aren't connected with what their market value is. But it also gives them the opportunity to say, oh, I don't have exemptions. What would happen if I have an exemption? So we're trying it on for size at the notice of property value sessions, and we hope next year to put it on the web. And I'll leave this with you if you'd like to have You said you had some magnets and different things. We do. Okay. We have magnets. We have a <laughs> Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which was created, which New York State copied now. So it first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving right along, we're going to, uh, as everybody knows, we have uh, two resolutions before the board for Landmarks Colony. I think we're all very familiar with this whole proposal. So we're just going if it's okay with the members of the board, we'll just go right to the resolution. Is that fine? Okay, Dan, I know you do have a statement, though, yeah. to read from Councilmember Matteo. Show you something. Is this still recording? Yes. It's fine. It's fine? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Good evening. My name is Daniel Castorina, and I'm here uh, today representing Minority Leader Stephen Matteo. The minority leader is incredibly proud of the role he played in supporting the Landmark Colony Project, both as Chief of Staff to Borough President uh, Otto during his council tenure and as a member of that body himself. He can tell you firsthand that the Borough President's tenacity and vision are why Farm Colony will get a new lease on life. Not only will it become a tremendous community asset, but this initiative will also restore and preserve an important piece of our local history. Uh, shepherding this project through the council was an important priority for the councilman, and he looks forward to seeing Landmark Colony become a reality. Uh, on his behalf, I vote aye. All right, so I'm going to move forward right to the resolution. So the first one, which is the one that is a little bit longer, uh, it's got the five paragraphs. Whereas the New York City Economic Development Corporation is tasked with the spurring and fostering of economic development within the borough of Staten Island and the city of New York. Whereas the New York City Economic Development Corporation has determined that the sale of the, a portion of the New York City owned non-alienable property within the Willowbrook area of Staten Island to NFC Associates LLC or an affiliated entity for development purposes is consistent with accomplishing said goal. Whereas the requirements of the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act and regulations have been fulfilled, and whereas the Borough Board of the Borough of Staten Island agrees that such transfer will generate economic benefit and is in the best interest of the Borough of Staten Island and the City of New York. Now, therefore, it be it resolved that pursuant to the New York City Uniform Land Use Review Process and Section 484B4 of the New York City Charter, the Borough Board of the Borough of Staten Island hereby approves the transfer of the aforementioned property to the New York City Land Development Corporation to sell through the New York City Economic Development Corporation said property to NFC Associates LLC or an affiliated entity. Any questions on the matter? Okay, let's go right to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Now for the second resolution. Whereas the Borough Board acknowledges that the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Housing and Economic Development conducted an environmental quality review of this proposal pursuant to Article 8 of the Environmental Conservation Law, the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, and the Rules of Procedure for City Environmental Quality Review and Executive Order 91 of 1977. Whereas, the Borough Board further acknowledges 
that as a result of the environmental quality review conducted of this proposal by the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Housing and Economic Development, pursuant to the law and rules set forth above, the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Housing and Economic Development issued an environmental assessment statement, otherwise known as an EAS, and a negative declaration on November 16, 2015. Therefore, be it resolved that the Borough Board approves the disposition pursuant to Section 384B-4 of the New York City Charter of City-Owned Property, located at 475 Brill Avenue, Staten Island, as described in the submission by the New York City Economic Development Corporation to the Staten Island Borough Board. Any questions on the resolution? Okay, move forward to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, any objections? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Um, let's just uh, wrap up now. Any old business? Any new business? Okay, can I entertain a motion to adjourn, please? CB3, CB1. Okay, thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.